So you are under the belief, I would assume, that this is an outbound business. You don't go to the office and people are just lined up outside saying, oh, I need a realtor, I need a realtor. At the end of the day, to get the actual business, especially as a new agent, you have to put in the work and you have to prospect. You yeah. need to be the very first voice. Business is just not gonna knock at your door. Never, right? Zero. All right, you guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I have another great guest, a new, another new agent that's doing amazing things. And she sent me a message on Instagram, must've been a week or two ago. And uh, she's got a really cool story and finding quick success, which is kind of the, the theme of today's episode. So with me today, I have Rachel Burfield with us on the show. Welcome, Rachel. Hi, thank you Hi. so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm so like motivated by everything that you do, all of your content. It's just been amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And uh, why don't you kind of just share with us before we unpack your story too much, where, where do you sell real estate and how long have you been in the business? So I am part of the Miami board of realtors. Um, my main office is in South beach, but I pretty much do anywhere in Southern Florida. Um, you know, Miami is the market here is, and the amount of realtors is pretty insane. Crazy. Um, and I have had my license since November of 2021. So a little over three months. Awesome. So, so you're, you're <laughs> yeah, you're brand new to the game and you're selling real estate in, in arguably one of the most competitive markets in the world, in the world. So first and foremost, what led you to say to yourself, all right, I'm going to go get into real estate in the first place. So funny enough, I actually took the course two times. The first time I never even went to take the state exam and I had no motivation at all. I was in a weird spot in my life. Um, and then the second time I took the course and it was about to expire where I would have to go take the class again. And I was like, I'm not gonna let that happen. Um, I actually just beat cervical cancer. So I was like, my life is just starting. I'm 32 years old and I'm gonna get going with this. So that's awesome. I studied my butt off. I went, took the test, passed, and here I am. That's awesome. Well, that, congratulate. I mean, that's that's really, really cool. I didn't know that, right? So that's that's amazing. <laughs> so the thing that I do know is that for most new real estate agents getting into the business, they think it's something that it's not. And then they quickly find out, oh, shit, what did I just do? Did you have that same moment? And if you did, what was that like for you? So honestly... I knew from the beginning that it was going to be sales because I'm the type of person where I don't do anything unless I'm doing research, looking up on YouTube. So I knew what I was getting into and I am pretty good on the phone. So this was going to work in my favor. Um, so yeah, I definitely That's great. knew what I was getting into. So, 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 I mean, you deserve a lot of credit, Rachel. And, and I mean that because as you know, I mean, you're surrounded by it in Miami. I mean, everyone thinks you're going to be famous and drive Ferraris and get rich. Like that's what you think. That's what people think when they get into real estate. Um, you did your research, right? You came in well prepared. When you say you're good on the phone, were you in phone sales before and that skills transferring over now or? Yeah. So I did um, a little bit of cold calling, like actual cold calling for um, cleaner degreasers. Oh, and nice we were selling like thousands of dollars worth of that. And, you know, that really got me prepared with the phone sales. And those were what I would consider to be cold calls versus this is not so much. Yeah, dude. Oh my God. That's, that's amazing. So that, that is, I mean, I wish everybody could, could do something like that type of work before they got into our business because you nailed it. And I couldn't agree with you more with what you just said, which was, Cold calling and what we do in real estate, when we when we talk about making outbound prospecting phone calls, they're completely different. But when they hear, when people hear the word cold calling, they automatically have like this negative connotation towards it. And so I want to hear from you, like how you differentiate like what you used to do and then what you're doing in real estate. Well, the first thing is I'm not sitting in a call center. I'm not sitting with a bunch of other people that are doing calls at the same time. I can do this from anywhere. That's one benefit. And the other thing is these people are trying to sell their homes. Um, I reach out personally to for sale by owners. So they're probably 
already ready. They're just waiting on either the right agent or they're going to try to sell it on their own, but eventually they're going to use an agent. So I want to be their number one top of mind when they think of who am I going to use to sell my property? And, you know, even if it takes weeks or months, I still want to be on the top of their mind. Awesome. So, so again, gr great definition, right? So, and I'll just add a couple things to it. And I mean, really you nailed it. Cold calling is like calling random people out of the blue where we have no idea if they're interested in our product or our service. When we prospect in real estate, we're calling a specific demographic where Rachel, you and I already know they have a need to sell a house. And so that's, that's the big, big difference. And so let's, let's jump into that. So you get in the business uh, 90 days ago. Um, what were you doing to generate business before maybe you came across uh, uh, what, what it is that I teach? So I was using primarily Zillow. Um, I've always looked at Zillow even before I wanted to do anything with real estate. Just I've always had an interest in that. So I was like, I'm going to go there. I know that people post their homes and they're not represented. Let me try to uh, reach out to them. And I didn't have a script or anything. The first time I picked up the phone, I was so nervous. I was shaking. I was just saying, hi, uh, I saw your listing. And I, they couldn't tell I was nervous. But honestly, I built a connection with that very first call. And she invited me into her home. And I did a very <laughs> all over the place listing presentation. I didn't get the listing, but that fueled my fire right there. Got it. Because you, you said, okay, I can do this, right? You you yeah. mustered up the courage. You picked up the phone that for most new agents weighs 10,000 pounds, by the way, you said, yeah. you know what, screw it. I'm going to go after this. This is my chance to make it. Um, all right. So that, so that makes a lot of sense. So, so I want to fast forward uh, a minute. And so you sent me a message. I have it right here on my phone and you, again, you're in a very, very competitive market. You're in the game for 90 days and you're able to go out there and secure your first for sale by owner uh, listing. So congratulations. Thank Let's you. walk people through maybe what you learned and how you took action to make this entire thing uh, come to fruition for yourself. So I learned that you definitely need to stick to the script. Um, the minute that you go on a tangent or, you know, don't internalize anything, they will tell right away that you're not that you're new and I am new. So um, I also do have to thank my boyfriend who every time I go off the script because we work together, he's the marketing director. He's like, get back on that script. That's <laughs> so, awesome. Yeah, ever since then, I mean, I've been getting very hot leads since using, I have the script right here. I love it. <laughs> and um, the for sale by owner that I converted into a listing, um, this just happened less than a week ago, maybe a yeah. week ago actually. Um, followed the script all the way down and then built a very strong rapport. She invited me to Starbucks with her husband. I bought them their drinks and we just were there for maybe two and a half hours, just building a connection. And it's that in-person interaction that really sealed the deal, but that would have not happened had I not, you know, done the script and built that rapport over the phone. Got it. All right. So, so let's, let's go a little bit deeper because I don't coach you. Right. So this is, this is all you just downloaded my script book. What script are you using? Are you using 1.0 or 2.0? 2.0. All right. So you're using 2.0, which will help you uncover uh, listing opportunities over the phone before you even get face to face. So um, yeah. what did you learn? Like, so you've been doing this for 90 days. You've had a lot of calls, I would imagine that didn't go your way. And now as you're in this for 90 days, you're hopefully seeing more success. What have you learned? Let's just stay with the phone call for right now. Like, okay. what did you, what have you learned that doesn't work that you want to stay away from? And I can help you here too, because there's these rules that I coach an agent, like, don't do that. Don't do that. Stay away from that. Stay away from that. Have you learned anything on your own? Like what works and what doesn't work when you're on the phone? Um, I think for me personally, my biggest law when it comes to phone calls is getting off the phone too quickly. I sometimes will be the one to hang up the phone and they would have continued the conversation, but sometimes I just, and that's where the script comes in. Sometimes I just don't remember, like know how to continue the flow of the conversation. So I feel like I need to work on staying on the phone longer and not being so quick to say, okay, well, I'll call you in a couple of weeks and see if you're looking to sell then or to use an agent then and hang up. And that I feel like has lost me probably some business. 
Oh, wait, that is huge. So uh, it's amazing that you're self-aware enough to like, pu like pull that out because you're exactly right. Most new like phone salespeople end phone calls way too early. And so we call it in our coaching group, like staying in the pocket. And so we teach something called ARPing, right? Acknowledge, respond, pivot to another question immediately. This is how we keep conversations moving forward always digging deeper, always asking the next question, using the Socratic method to open up the seller so they don't feel any threat whatsoever. And so I'll give you a little bit of coaching right now on mm -hmm. how to do that moving forward. But you really want to get good at speaking in hypotheticals, right? So not yeah. putting people in, the, in a position to make a decision today because listing and selling a home and moving is a massive decision. So what we need to do on the phone is get small, micro commitments about a hypothetical future that may or may not come. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. Because now it's a lot less threatening for somebody to open up and tell you what they would potentially do in the future. So I love that you, that you recognize that. And so um, we were just on some prospecting sessions this morning with some of my coaching clients and the same thing. We're just ending calls too quickly when there's a lead that is potentially there. So, all right. So that's number one. Number two, Let's talk about the face-to-face -face appointment for a second. So you're using script 2.0, which essentially, just for the audience who doesn't know what we're talking about, who doesn't have the script book, essentially what you're doing is you're, you're setting uh, an appointment with the first sale by owner under the pretense of looking at a backup plan is what we call it, right? Like the potential yeah. to work with you in the event they cannot sell on their own. So tell me how you're setting the appointment. Is that how you're doing it? Um, yes, I am. I'm saying, you know, I... I definitely respect that you're selling it on your own, despite what anybody tells you. I think it is a smart move at first and give it a couple of weeks and why not interview me and we can go over another plan just in case your plan A doesn't work. Doesn't everybody need a plan B? Love it. And you're finding, so that's exactly what I was just saying, right? So like speaking the hypotheticals, are you finding the more, the better you are at delivering that, the more people are open to meeting with you and talking through that? Absolutely. When I first was using the script, I was just reading it. And yeah. it's the sentences and the questions are longer when you're reading it because it's like you're pronouncing every word. When you internalize it and when you make it your own, and it doesn't have to be word for word, it just has to be the concept. That's when the business will come because it's part of you now. It's not just somebody else's words. 1000%. Like the, the script and going back to what you were saying in the beginning, the script is a structure of a conversation. You have to internalize that. So when it comes across, it comes across very conversational, very confident in a way that serves the consumer in a non-threatening way. So, so, so you, it's you internalizing the script, knowing what to say. So you can focus on listening to what the prospect is saying and be less worried about what you have to say. Because most new agents, I mean, they have that, that script. They're so scared mm -hmm. to look away from it because they're not even listening to what the prospect is saying. They're just like, what do I have to say next? What do I have to say next? What do I have to say next? But really when you listen and you ask a question, it'll help you dig deeper. Is that what you found as well? Yes, 100%. And I do find that how you have everything numbered like yeah. one through 10, that helps me keep on track. So I don't have to feel like I'm looking at it the entire time. I just remember, okay, I'm at three. Let's have a conversation. We can go off track for a little bit and then quickly come back and go to number four. You nailed it. You nailed it. Cool. So, so you set the appointment, um, just circling back on that, you, you are setting appointments under the, the circumstances to look at the opportunity to uh, have a conversation with you if they cannot sell on their own. Is that right? Yes, I find that that is most case for for sale by owners. Um, also, you know, expireds. I haven't had the best luck in expireds, and I think I may have given up too quickly on that area. But um, for sale by owners, yeah, I, I definitely say let's discuss possible like options after your plan doesn't work out. But I think that it's I, I keep on saying, you know, it's a great thing that you're doing, and I wish you all the best with that, and I think you'll do fine. But here's your plan B and let's meet and talk about it. And then they see me face to face. They can get a feel for who I am, not just a voice over the phone. And yeah, I've had quite a few um, in-person interactions. And then this one finally worked out. That's awesome. So if you had to guess, and I don't know how closely you're tracking your numbers, but hopefully you'll start tracking them like an absolute maniac. Um, <laughs> 
because uh, because it'll really open your eyes up to say, okay, wow, this is where I'm really good. Here's where I need to spend more time. But like, if you had to guess, and maybe you know, I don't know, like <laughs> of the for sale by owners that you talk to over the phone, how what percentage of them are open to the idea of considering other options down the road if they don't sell on their own? So I don't have an exact number, but I. I have good luck with meeting them in person. That's the thing. It's closing the actual deal because they are so stuck in, I'm going to sell this on my own. And then I have to make sure that I'm keeping in contact with them after that meeting, because then they'll forget about me and somebody else will jump in. And I've noticed that I look at Zillow. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've met with this person. They're listed with a different agent. So, um, yeah. Would you, yeah. Would you say, would you, so I guess what I'm getting at is, would you say that, when you position the script, like we're talking about that most for sale by owners are at least open to looking at other options down the road. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, a so huge percentage, huge percentage, right? So we're going to talk about follow-up in a second. I want the audience to understand, and maybe this will help you too, like connect the dots, really why this is working so well, going back to speaking in hypotheticals, mm-hmm. like imagine two people are at their wedding right? And maybe you've heard me use this analogy. Maybe you haven't like they're, they're on the altar. Like, you know, like the, the whole thing, the whole, you've been to millions of weddings, I'm sure. (laughs) Could you imagine saying, Hey, hold on one second, everybody, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You run up there, it's your best friend you grew up with. And you ask them, Hey, would you guys consider getting a divorce this afternoon? Like you'd get kicked out of the wedding and people would be like, dude, what Rachel, what the f***s wrong with you? Why would you ask that? It'd be ridiculous. You with me so far? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> However, what happens is we know 50% of all people and in uh, all marriages end up in a divorce, maybe higher in Miami, right? But uh, yeah, all jokes probably. aside, it's probably higher. So, so what am I saying? What's the point? The point is with the for sale by owner, it's the same thing. We're not going to go to a for sale by owner the first day they decide to go FISBO. Hey, I'm selling on my own realtors. Hello, I'm FISBO. No, I don't want to sell my house. It's ridiculous to go to them on that one day and try to convince them to list on day one. This is what's being taught in the industry. That is stupid. It's ridiculous. It'd be the same thing like going to your best friend on the altar. What makes more sense, what makes more sense is going to the for sale by owner and saying, hey, if things don't work out in your favor, to your point, you know, not that they will. I mean, chances are with this market, you probably will have a successful marriage. But if you end up marrying an asshole, right? And that person becomes, you know, someone you didn't think they are, certainly you'd be open to some other options down the road, right? Of course, people can, can, can process and accept that better. That's essentially yeah. what we're doing with the for sale by owner. Would you agree? Yes, definitely. Got it. All right, cool. So that's how we set the appointment. That's how we get people to say yes, because it's not threatening. There's no downside for that for sale by owner to meet with somebody in case their plan doesn't work. So, so walk us through then you, you go and meet this for sale by owner, the one that you listed. How yes. did that meeting go? You met him at a Starbucks, you said? Yes, I met them at a Starbucks. And the one downfall for me is I don't speak Spanish and living in Miami, that's kind of a, a must. So are you um, from Miami or are you from somewhere else when you moved there? I'm from South Florida my whole life. What part? I, I'm from uh, Fort Lauderdale. Oh, cool. Nice. All right. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm in South Beach now. That's where I live. And, um, you know, I do some business here, but I try to do it more for Lauderdale, Hollywood. Um, so this listing is actually Hollywood beach. And, uh, we went, we met at the Starbucks in Miami, like near both of their work. I wanted to make it as convenient for them as possible. Um, so we just sat there, we were talking about, you know, comparables. I brought my laptop. I didn't print them out a huge comp, like anything. I just wanted to make it super casual. Um, I don't even really have a go-to listing presentation. I kind of tailor it to each individual. Sure. Um, So they did want to price theirs a little bit too high. Um, I got them to come down a little bit, come a little bit more back down to reality, but it still is a little on the high side. Um, But at the end of the day, like I built that report with them. I put, they put their trust in me. I put my trust in them um, that we would get this done and we just had a real like a connection. And I feel like that is the main part that will help you get the business is be genuine. Don't, don't try to be someone that you're not. And yeah, that's great. So did you, did you get that on the first appointment? Did you make one call 
set the appointment, go to the appointment, or did it come through follow-up? No, it came through follow-up. Um, and it was actually three calls. So the first call, she had uh, just put it on Zillow four days prior. And normally I don't call anything that's that new, but it, it looked like a really nice place and I just wanted to give it a shot. So I called her, she's like, no, right now, I wanna just try to sell it on my own. And I said, okay, well, is it all right if I keep your number and your email and keep in contact with you? And she's like, yes, of course. So only three days later, I reached back out. And, you know, cause I, I, I heard the hesitancy in her um, listing on her own and selling on her own. So I was like, you know, if anybody else calls, they'll probably get this. So I called her three days later. She's like, well, we can do a Zoom meeting. I don't know about in person. And I was like, well, I would really prefer in person, but either way, whatever works for you. And so she had to speak to her husband. I called her a couple of days later, third call, and they agreed to meet at the Starbucks. Got it. I love it. So you should change one thing though. You should call them all on day one moving forward. Do not wait. Do not wait. Okay. Yeah. You, you want to be the first voice they hear. Now- yeah. We, I'm not getting into a whole coaching thing, but like, yeah. we already know they're not going to list. That's not the point of the call. The call, the point of the call is to figure out of every for sale by owner that comes into South Florida, which mm -hmm. ones would be open to meeting with Rachel if they can't sell on their own. Well, if you're the first voice, you're going to find that conversion from contact to lead generated is probably going to 10 X for you. Because yeah. if you wait three, four five days and they're getting hundreds of calls from other realtors and you try to run the same play, even though your value proposition or your offer is the same, people just don't want to hear it because they're so frustrated with all the calls. You yeah. need to be the very first voice that they hear when they decide to sell their house. They put on Zillow at 10 o'clock today. You're calling them at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. You're the first realtor they ever hear from. That's going to change yeah. those that's, conversations that's massively for you. So, all right. So, so you, you had, you followed up, you got that, uh, that listing. So, so let me just ask you this, I guess, what advice would you give to all these people that are getting in the industry, right? There's, you've heard the failure rates, 90% fail out in the first year. There's hundreds of thousands of new licensees every year. And all of them are scared to, to make calls. All of them don't understand this is a direct outbound sales business. And it is the reason they don't win. So like what, advice could you give new realtors getting into the business that are just struggling to generate business? So the first piece of advice, a hundred percent is pick up the phone. Do not be afraid of the phone. They're not going to jump out of the phone and do anything to you. It's a phone call. And that was the first thing that was the hardest for me was that initial first call. That's why I immediately did it. Anything that I am afraid of, I go head first. That's just That's how right. I am. It's the only way. Um, another thing is when you start making those phone calls and you build a schedule, you're going to do Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., whatever it is, keep the momentum. The minute that you give yourself a break, even if it's a, just a couple of days break, it's going to be like you're starting off at square one all over again. So build that momentum and never, ever let go. I love it. That's, that's phenomenal advice. Phenomenal advice. I guess last question for you. You know, again, going back to all the people getting into this business, um, people think this is a very, very sexy business that they're going to get famous, right? Like they just think I can just sit literally like put my makeup on and put a pretty outfit on post on Instagram, you know, and I'm just going to smash it in real estate. Like, do you think there's any truth to that? Or do you think people have to take action and actually prospect and like go meet people? Or do you think they can just sit back and, and, and uh, become famous and, and they're going to win as a new agent? So for me personally, I think it's like 90% prospecting and, and phone calls and maybe dedicate 10% of your time to social media. Um, I do reels and things, but I don't even do it with the hopes of getting business through Instagram. I do it with the hopes of other realtors you know, connecting with me and sending me referrals. That's all I, I use it. Instagram for. So, I mean, that's so good. You're so new in the business and you can accept this. I mean, why, why are so many agents having such a hard time with this? Like, why are they just, they're the opposite. They just like, oh, I'm not going to prospect mm -hmm. F that. Like, I just want to post. Like, I know it's the path of least resistance, but I, I just want to hear from you as a brand new agent looking through a different lens. You probably have a bunch of friends that are new. Why yeah. do you think they can... Like, what part of them do you believe 
that they believe that they could just succeed without prospecting? Well, I think that it has to do with the fact that they think they can work any hours that they want. They can do this two days a week and have fun in the meantime or work a full-time job, which is great. And if you need to do that, of course, by all means. But for me personally, I need to get into the office, the actual office where I'm usually the only person there. That's and right. Pick up the phone and put in the hours and make the phone calls. And most people don't want to hear that because they want, they see Netflix shows and they see all these shows and it looks so easy and glamorous. Like you said, people jumping off of helicopters and these crazy videos. But at the end of the day, to get the actual business, especially as a new agent, you have to put in the work and you have to prospect because business is just not going to knock at your door. Oh, it's so good. So, so you are under the belief, I would assume that this is an outbound business. You don't go to the office and people are just lined up outside saying, oh, I need a realtor. I need a realtor. Never, right? Zero. Maybe once a month, somebody yeah. <laughs> that comes in is like, I'm a buyer. And even then, you don't know if they're serious or not. It's so rare. It's so rare. Um, rare. And how, how are you... You know, you just brought up another thing too. I am curious because most new agents that believe in what you believe in are, are taking this seriously like a real sales business. They are the only ones at their brokerage going in every day. They're the only one at their brokerage picking up the phone and prospecting and treating it like a real business that it is, not a hobby. Are you, how are you dealing with that? Because a lot of new agents are being judged. They're being outcasted. Like, oh my God, what are you doing? Like, you know, are, have you felt any of that or has your brokerage been pretty supportive? Well, I am lucky to have my boyfriend who is the marketing director of my brokerage that I work for. Oh, that's so good. He'll come to the office with me sometimes. He does like headshots for people and he's so, so motivating. I'm so blessed to have him. But even though um, he comes with me sometimes, most of the time I'm on my own, but everybody's super supportive. They see good. me putting in the work. I feel like it actually may rub off a little bit on them. Sure. Which I think it's a good thing. Um, I haven't had any cattiness or anything like that. I mean, you're lucky. That's great. I mean, real estate's the only industry where people get looked down upon for being successful because 99% of the agents at these brokerages don't sell any houses. And so when they see somebody that's putting in the work, they get so threatened. So it's good. You're in a spot yeah. where, where you're, well, you're who knows? I mean, maybe, maybe they are, but not to my face. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just, it's, it's lonely at the top. Like you've heard that before, but in real estate, it's very true. Like 5% of us are selling 95% of all the houses, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's just a reality because people just refuse to accept the truth. So this is a great conversation. I, I mean, I can already tell you have the mindset, you have the work ethic to have a very successful career in the future. So uh, let's, let's, let's stay connected for sure. If, if people want to reach out and you inspire them, where's the best place for them to do so? Is it, is it Instagram? Yeah. Instagram is the best place. It's just Rachel Realty FL. So FL like Florida. And that's the best place to reach out to me. And I definitely work with referrals too. And thank you so much for having me. You're so motivational and inspiring. And without your script, I don't know where I would be right now. And I'm not just saying that. It's 100% true. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I, I know you're going to have a very successful career. So thanks for popping on the podcast and pouring back into the industry. But yeah, let's do this in another couple of months and see how the rest of 2022 goes for you. And, and I have no doubt that you could be the, the, the queen of South Beach if you keep putting it in. So keep rocking and rolling. Thank you we'll so much. We'll talk to you soon, Rachel. Thank you. Bye. We'll talk to Have you a soon. good one. You too. Take care.